this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We heard that there is no way. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. Faith Nation, that was CC Wayne's Believe for It. I love the song, it just builds so much hope and um, it really gets me started for the day. So, I just want to welcome you guys to my channel. Welcome to the Faith Nation channel. We are all about ministry in faith, in our homes, in our children, in our relationships, and obviously. In God so today we are going to continue our teaching for those who are coming across this video for the first time I just want to bring you guys to a speed so we are on the journey of faith and we are talking about the things of faith and just to forward, fast forward everything we have been revealed according to the word that the unrighteous hold the truth and the truth was manifest in them and it was made known to them but they did not give thanks. Instead, they decided to profess themselves to be wise and they changed the glory of God and they were given up into uncleanness and as a result are also given up into vile affections, which is uh, what we were recently talking about. And just to um, add on, 
we have also you know been teaching about how they turned uh, the truth of God into a lie and they decided to worship the creature more than the creator so that is the summary of uh, what we have been talking about so far okay so I'm just gonna um, go through my notes I'm just gonna prepare the last session that we spoke about was from uh, verse 26. Verse 26. Let me just get my Bible here. Um, okay, so I'm just going to read verse 25 going into verse 26 so that we get the clear understanding. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship uh, and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? And now we are talking about how God gave them up unto vile affections. So we had the last teaching about the vile affections. And we're going to finish that scripture for um, starting from, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That is what we're going to be focusing on. Verse 26, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Welcome you guys all. Uh, we're just going to start off with a prayer just before we get to the teaching. Uh, dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this session. Uh, may you bless this session, Father God. May you bless this teaching in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for the revelation of truth. We thank you for the revelation of your glory, the revelation of who you are in worship. And Father God, we also just want to thank you for the truth that you have inputted in us and the faith that you have given us and the grace that you have blessed us with. As we go through this journey of faith, Father God, may you give us May you give us up into righteousness instead of uncleanness, Father God, and vile affections. As we continue the word, may you enlighten us. May you bring us into uh, another teaching, the depth of what we have uh, gone through. And may it penetrate uh, to the souls that um, are in need of the word. May they receive it well. And I pray over my souls and I bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say to them, God does not give us up to our affections for nothing, but he instead wants to do a work in us. And so let us allow God in our lives to do the amazing work that he has for us in the supernatural for his kingdom. Uh, we thank you, Father God, for this session. And may you anoint it and may it reach the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, 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 guys. I'm happy to be teaching again because it's just what I love. Okay, so we're going to go straight into verse 26. Let's go straight in. Okay. Um, for God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature okay now we're just gonna i'm gonna read genesis 2 21 to 23 and 25 and then i'm gonna read genesis 3 verse 20 right just stay with me we'll see why i'm reading this okay and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh instead. And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And they were both naked. The man and his wife were not ashamed. And Adam called his wife, his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Okay. Now, now we start. Okay. The first thing that we are 
given knowledge of in terms of the scripture that we have read 26 and Genesis. The first thing that we are given knowledge and wisdom is that a woman is solely purposed for a man because she comes from men. That makes the woman a representative of Adam. And the man is proud of her. She has come full circle as a representative of him. Who he is and everything that surrounds them. This is the woman. She has come to a full circle as a representative of him and who he is and everything that surrounds them. So you are conceived by that which belongs to you. You are conceived by that which belongs to you. The rib which formed the woman belongs to Adam. And the sexual act between the two and their bodies belong to each other. Follow me, guys. Just, just follow me. The sexual act between the two and their bodies belong to each other. Now, being naked is an act of pleasure between a man and a woman. And there's no shame in being naked. There should not be any shame in being naked. Rather, instead, there is much pleasure that God inputted in the act of sex, being a spiritual act that brings about two people in exchange of their bodies and spirit and everything about themselves as individuals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. Being naked is an act of pleasure between a man and a woman, and there is no shame in being naked. Rather, instead, there is much pleasure that God inputted in the act of sex, being a spiritual act. Being a spiritual act. Let's underline that. Being a spiritual act that brings about two people in exchange of their bodies, number one, and spirit, number two, and everything about themselves as individuals. So you are in the act, you are in action, you are in doing, you are in giving, and you are in receiving the act of sex, being a spiritual act. There is power in sex, and sexual relations. There is power in sex and sexual relations. There are curses and blessings in sex. It is a spiritual act, guys. It's a spiritual act. There are ties to these things. There are curses and blessings in sex. Who, you, who are you in exchange with sexually? And by that, I mean spiritually. Who are you in exchange with sexually? This is, this is going to get real, guys. This, this is going to get real. Very real. Okay. Point number three. What are you choosing for your body? What are you choosing for your body? And what are you choosing to let your body carry through sex. What are you what are you choosing for your body and what are you choosing to let your body carry through sex? Are you choosing death or life? Is it purpose or is it a curse? Is it purpose or is it a curse? Have a conversation with your body. 
Have a conversation with your body. Have a conversation with your vile affections. And remember what we said about vile affections and how it's important for you guys to remember the definitions. Vile affections means infamy. It means um, disgrace. It means suffering, uh, passions, uh, evil reputations, and so on. If you go back to my teaching, you will get the full definition of what, what vile affections is. The question is, have you had the conversation with your body? And have you had a conversation with your vile affections, with your evil reputations, with your gross sexual immoralities? Sit with them and list them and see how the picture looks. List your gross sexual immoralities. List your disgrace. There's nothing wrong in listing that which you have been or that which you have become as a result wanting to change because that's perspective, right? So you need to list all these things down and see how the picture looks. Is it pleasing to God? Or Satan? Is it pleasing to God or Satan? Only then will you know what you are given up into. Only then will you know what you are given up to. Is it pleasing to God or Satan? How is the list of you, your vile affections looking like? What is the picture? Is it uncleanness? Is it vile affections? Is it purity? Where are you? Where are you in your conversations with your body? Are you under suffering or disgrace? Or are you under blessings that release the power of God through the act? Which one is it? Which one are you falling under? This is very important, guys, because this is a big part of our lives. And these are our bodies that carry the things of life. Okay, let's continue. You will only know the true God sex, just to be specific. You will only know the truth, the true God sex, when you seek your husband and or your wife. Even in your current relationship, you will know whether it is God or Satan. You will only know the true God sex when you seek your husband and or your wife through prayer through fasting through purification of your body through the cleansing of your body by the blood of jesus the seeking process needs to to go through a cleansing process because you cannot seek in your uncleanness you need to come to a place of purification. You need to come to a place of salvation for you to start seeking everything concerning the things of God. You need to give yourself up to God. You need to be under the spirit of salvation so that you get the true revelation. You will only know the true God's sex when you seek your husband and or wife. And even in the current relationship that you are in, you will know whether it's God or Satan. There is no ways about it. We all know. There is something that we all know. It's not a secret. People know why they get into certain things. People go into certain decisions Consciously so.
That's just the reality of it. We go through choices knowing exactly what we are doing. And that is why it's important for you to know that whatever path that you choose in life, God is going to give you up to that until you get out of it to do good for him. Whatever that change that you caused around you that does not glorify God, that gives you up into uncleanness, that gives you up into vile afflictions, God is going to do the rest and he's going to give you up into that because you're already in it. People need, guys, listen to this. People need to pray and fast over their sex life. And the person they are involved with. Because this is your body that you are giving up. You need to pray. You need to pray and fast over your body. To what it is going to receive or to what it is going to give. You will know whether it is an act that you should do or not. That's God speaking to you. Because he has the power to speak to your body. Only when you let him do that, only when your spirit is also activated, will you know that this body will only seek the husband or the wife. And that requires a waiting period. Zero involvement. People need to pray and fast over their sex life and the person they're involved with. Because the question is, is it a cursing or is it a blessing? Is it a curse or is it a blessing? I mean, it's a different story altogether when, when you are having sex with multiple partners. You are straight in the curse. You are straight in the curse. And you won't even have time to pray and fast because you are without wisdom. And there's no room for your body to breathe because too many bodies are breathing things into it. It's a whole new ball game when you are having sex with multiple partners you will not have time to pray and fast you will not have the spirit of wisdom your body will not breathe because there are too many bodies on your body and inside of you breathing inside of your body and releasing whatever it is inside your body and those bodies are stealing your successes in the spirit in the spirit because remember everything happens in the spirit realm before it can become flesh the book of john says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and it was full of truth so all things are in the spirit before they can manifest the, righteous, the unrighteous received the truth of God and it was made manifest in them. So they received the word before it can even manifest in them. So if you are receiving multiple bodies in your body, it is manifesting something in your body. And that something is going to go on the outside. That something is stealing your success in the spirit. And it's obviously going to steal it in the flesh. It's stealing your blessings, your spiritual. Get this? Spiritual juices. It's stealing away your spiritual juices. And I'm talking about the sexual relations between you and your possible husband and wife. Those sacred spiritual juices that are meant for your partner they are being stolen by the enemy
they are meant, those spiritual juices are meant to be pleasing to God and your husband and your wife. But it's stealing the fact that you are with multiple partners, that is stealing, that those bodies, they are stealing the beauty of your body. There's too much dirt on it, too much uncleanness on it. Your body is governed by theft. Hallelujah. Just listen to that. Your body is governed by theft, and that is Satan himself. You are having sex with Satan. This applies both to a man and to a woman. There's no one way about it. Because this act is between two people. So one cannot say the, the curses are going to the woman and, and, and the blessings are going to the man and vice versa. No. It does not work like that. Even men get stolen away from. Even men lose value. Women also lose value. There's no such thing as the woman loses the value. Only the woman. The man also loses the value. And this is the wisdom we come to once we understand the power of sex. This is the wisdom we come to once we understand the power of sex. It belongs to God. It's not yours to give to those who are ungodly. It is not yours to give to those who are ungodly, to those who are not deserving of you, to those who will not respect you, who will not respect the women that you are, who will not respect the man that you are. Because this thing is a two-way street, guys. I'm not only speaking to women, I'm also speaking to men. That the devil has got the power to steal both from men and women. And understand that when the devil steals from the man and the woman, this woman that is destined to have a man is also being stolen away from. And this man that has or that's destined to have a woman, is also being stolen away from. So this thing is, is a very powerful act. And the only way people can push through this, this stealing process is if we pray for our partners, is if we pray for our husbands and wives, even though we have not met them. So that when we encounter them, they are purified and they are cleansed. You don't want to do that when you have met somebody. Do it when you are seeking a husband, when you are seeking a wife. You do the cleaning first on you. You gain the value first on you. You respect yourself again on you. And you pray about finding your husband and your wife in your purified glorified manner okay seek first the kingdom of god and he will give you your sexual partner that you will enjoy this is the truth guys when we are seeking the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God comes with the pleasures of sexual relations with your husband and with your wife. It is a God creation that is meant to be enjoyable between wife and husband or the person that you are in a serious commitment with, that you have committed your relationship to God and you guys know where you stand in the things of God and what you are planning towards in terms of glorifying your God in your relationship. Because your relationship needs to glorify God. There has to be God involved in your relationship and God will bless that relationship. He will edify that relationship. 
and you won't have to be under question because you have made God the foundation of your relationship. Stop complaining about other people's sex and start praying over the one that you should and will give you what your body deserves. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Stop comparing. But this is both to men and women. Stop complaining and stop comparing. Stop comparing other people's sex to other people. Start praying over the one that you should be involved with. The husband, the wife that you should be involved with. That your body deserves. And your body, according to God, when it comes to his creation... When it, comes to, when it comes to the creation of sex, is deserving of endless pleasure. And this is pleasure in abundance. It exists. It exists. I'm pretty sure for those people who have found their love and they've been married with their husbands and wives for so long, can have a, 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 a piece of talk concerning this, that it does exist. When your body is spiritually ready to receive your husband and your wife, this is possible. This exists. Endless pleasure and pleasure in abundance. Now, I want you guys to do something, right? Because we, we are talking about how um, the women even did change the natural use of their bodies. We're talking about that. And it's, it's, it's a pity that they come to that change. They come to a change of the natural use into that which is against nature. So now, this, this is, I want you guys to do this. Whoever is in this uh, conflict, this sexual conflict, I want you guys to claim back all your spiritual pleasures that the enemy has taken away from you to come back to you purified and blessed by God. You have to claim back that which was stolen from your body. Claim all your body parts back to where they belong. Because I said, guys, you need to list the vile affections, the vile affections, and you need to see a picture created from that list so that you are able to claim back your body parts from the enemy or from the enemies or, or where they've gone. You need to claim them back to where they belong. You need to claim it. No one else. Your husband does not have to claim it. Your wife does not have to claim it. You need to claim it for yourself. Because the enemy stole. The enemy put a curse in your body. Claim your bosom. And guys, this is, this is hardcore. Because this is the reality. Claim your bosom. Claim your body. Claim your sacred place in between both men and women. All those hands that have touched your legs and your body and the bodies that have gone in and out of your body, lose those touches. Lose those touches and act from your body and wash yourself with the blood of Jesus. And I literally mean wash yourself with the blood. For me, washing myself with the blood means confessing the blood of Jesus over my body. Soaking my body in the blood. You have to believe in the blood. For you to believe that it can be soaked. For you to believe that it can clean your body. That you can get back that which you have lost. 
loose those touches and acts from your body and wash yourself with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Claim your face, your beautiful face. Claim your, your beautiful mind. Claim your lips. Claim your buttocks. Claim your thighs. Claim the God's sexual pleasures back because the devil did steal it away. This is real, guys. This is as real as it gets. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Because I didn't write this alone. You guys know. I write with the Holy Spirit. Because he is my utterance. Claim your body parts back. Sit down. Create the vile affection picture. Create the uncleanness. Create it all. Put it down. On, let it have a picture. Then claim it back. You need to see what you have lost. You need to know where you got lost and you need to claim it back because guys it's possible if you do this for me if you do actually don't even do it for me do it for yourself and do it for god and see what god does for your body see what god does for your body sexually see the power of cleansing that god will do on your body and your husband and your wife will show up i'm telling you a fact it's a fact it's a fact just go do it don't even try it just go do it hmm. claim the god sexual pleasures back because the devil did steal it away claim the enjoyment back so that when you meet your husband your body knows him and him only your body knows him and him only. That means there is no one that you can ever compare your husband to. Claim the enjoyment back so that when you meet your wife, your body knows her and her only. Men claim back your God pleasure. I said it. <laughs> so that when you meet your wife, your body knows her and her only. There will be no room to compare because you are loosed from the evil pleasures. The pleasure won't be the same. That is a given. But this type of pleasure needs time. It is godly. It is godly. It needs time. You're going to have to learn a different type of pleasure. And you're going to have to accept a different type of pleasure. And get yourself to understand that this is what your body is purified for. It is godly. It takes time. It takes time and it's going to be the best. It is the best. It is godly. It is possible to know the truth about your man or woman through the act of sex. It's so possible. You can get so many revelations about that person through sex. You can know the truth through sex because when it's godly, God will speak to you about your partner through sex. I'm not speaking, guys. I'm not speaking because, you know, I'm speaking for the sake of speaking. I've, I've lived this. God will speak to you about your partner through sex. You can wake up asking questions. And your partner will be shocked. But it's your God partner. So it's not going to scare you. 
God has the power to speak to you about your partner through sex. It's a fact. And the devil knows that. The devil knows that. Now, power by definition is when you possess something. You have the mindset to make it yours. Power. Possession. Possessing of something. The knowledge and wisdom in sex is that you are taking from another spirit everything about themselves and you are giving into another spirit everything about yourself. The knowledge and wisdom and power in sex is that you are taking from another spirit everything about themselves and you are giving yourself to that person everything about yourself. Those two factors possess each other and are in complement of one another, purposefully so for good and for eternal pleasure. It's supposed to be like that. Purposefully so. This is for purpose. It's not meant to be a curse. It's not meant to steal away from you. It's supposed to bless you. It's supposed to to let you know the pleasures of God, the amazing uh, work that God has done for two people to express each other to themselves in love. The book of Romans gives it a shift. The book of Romans gives it a shift. And by that, I mean it tells us what you can be given up to and the natural use that was changed by a woman to that which is against nature. That is the shift. Now we know. We know what the purpose of sex is, but now we are given a shift and it tells us that people can change it to be a terrible thing. That is against nature. And that is women having sex with other women. That is against nature. That is the terrible change. That is the giving up to vile affections. God. Mm, that is the giving up to vile affections. It's evil. It's evil. It's evil. Women having sex with other women is evil. I don't know who's going to attack me on this one, but I'm ready for it because I am protected and guarded by the Holy Spirit and according to the word, because I'm speaking according to the word. It is evil. Men having sex with other men is evil. You are under the curse. You are under the curse. This is where you know that it's the devil. You are under the curse. Literally, you've given yourself into a vile affection and now God is just going to finish your vile affections. He's going to give you up to even more vile affections, to even more evil. You're under the curse. Multiple partners. If you have multiple partners, you're under the curse. I'm sorry to say that to you guys, but it is the truth. If you have multiple partners, you are under the curse. Is the true fact. Adultery. You're under the curse. Guys, <laughs> because the devil steals from your home. The devil steals from your wife. What your wife is supposed to be having from your body is going to another body. Is that not a way of stealing? Is that not a curse? Because you come back into the household and you want to, to, to uh, 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 have that loving time with your woman or your man, but you've gone out of the relationship and you think you're bringing what to the house? You're bringing a curse. 
And that is why I say, when you have a God partner, you will know these things. God will speak to you about these things. And that is why people come to question people's ways randomly so because they have had encounter with their partner their wife their husband and they know their husband and their wife's bodies the power of sex can't get away from it you can't get away from the curse you can't get away from the truth you can't even get away from the blessing it's supposed to be a blessing Adultery is not a normal thing. Trust. You are under the curse. Literally. You're just giving yourself up there to be cursed. You can lose it all. Literally. You can lose it all. Because that's just what the devil does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, you need to be able to lose yourself from the curse and wash yourself with the only blood that saves the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can claim it all back. I'm going back, guys. I said it before. You can claim it all back. You can claim it all back. God is against anything sexual that does not exalt him. He's against anything that does not exalt him. Anything sexual. It's his creation. If it does not exalt him, he will be against it. He will be against it. He created the act of sex. Women on women and men on men having sex is not of God. It is not of God. It is not of God. Can never be of God. If anything, it's of the devil. It's just of the devil. It's of the devil. Keep in mind this. Anything that is the opposite of what God said is is of evil it belongs to satan it's a demon that comes from satan when you sleep with women and when men sleep when women sleep with women and men sleep with men it is a demon that comes from satan that has come to steal from you the purpose and that is the real truth. And it's brutal because it's clear from the beginning that God created sex to be between a man and a woman, a wife. Sex is of God. And it's there to exalt him. And it's there to edify him because he has blessed human beings with such a love and affection. That is a language of love. You don't need to say anything. It's a language of love. God has blessed and he has made the sex to exalt him and edify his excellent work in human being. It is a love. It is an affection. Women on women and men on men are under the spirit of rejection. They are under the spirit of rejection. The suffering is too great to bear. They are under suffering. They are literally under suffering. The punishment is obvious. The curse is obvious. Society has made it okay that it is okay for a woman to be with a woman and a man with a woman. No, it's not okay. It's not a blessing. It's evil. It's a curse. They will never produce anything from each other. They do not have the power to multiply. They don't have the power to increase in the kingdom of God. And they are not edifying God. They're not exalting God. They're not speaking of him over their lives. 
It's not okay. It's not okay. And that is why they receive punishment from people. And it's not okay for people to punish other people. But what I'm trying to show to you guys is that it is a punishment. Some people don't know. It's not, it's not our place to punish people. But some people see it as these people need to be punished. They see it like that. And that is why the, the vile affection falls under a suffering. The suffering is too great to bear. The punishment is obvious. They will never produce anything from each other. These two parties are a disgrace to the kingdom of God and God will reject them. Because he has said so. I will put you up to vile affections. He will give you away and he will give you up to suffering and uncleanness. And to infamy and to gross sexual immoralities. They are under gross sexual immorality. It is rejected by many. It's rejected by many. God rejects it. They've created their own society. God, God has one society. God has one society, and that is the kingdom of God. You, you choose to be part of the kingdom or not. If you are not part of the kingdom, you are part of the Satan society. You are governed by Satan. And, and the women having sex with women and, and men having sex with other men have created their own society. So automatically these people are set apart. That is rejection. You are set apart from the normal society that we all know that men and women are meant to be together. That is the society of God. But they have created their own. They will never fit in. They will never fit in the society of the kingdom of God and heaven. The kingdom of heaven and earth. Literally, they will never fit in. They are meant for earth, but they do not even fit in the kingdom of earth. Their land is, is the unknown land. It's an unknown land to the godly. And punishment is their portion according to the gospel. Punishment is their portion according to the gospel. Oh. The natural use. This is what is unnatural. This is what God is against. Here is the natural use of a woman. It's plain and simple and straightforward. The natural use of a woman is to multiply the family. And we all know that. It's to bear children with a man through sex. The natural use of a woman. Not women going against the natural use. Women need to go for their natural use. And that is to multiply the family. That is for the womb to bear children and to multiply. That is the glory of God. That is God working inside of a woman. A child that is born, that is carried for nine months, is a miracle child. Because everything is created in the womb and God is the creator of the child. So how is a woman on a woman going to glorify God if they cannot multiply? 
how is a man on a man going to glorify God if all they're doing is wasting what can be created from man? All I'm going to say, guys, to you is pray and fast over your purpose partner and your sex life. And see what God does when you glorify him in all his excellent ways. It is an excellent way. It's an excellent way. Satan did not create this. That man has got no power to create anything. Literally, he has never created anything. He's just here to steal. He's here to steal the creation. Pray and fast over your purpose partner and your sex life as much as we pray for everything that we need in our lives before we sleep and when we wake up do the same for your purpose partner and your sex life there will be no temptation towards the other woman Literally, guys, this is possible. It's possible. It's, it's, it's been done. It's possible. People can testify to this. It happens. It exists. You will not have a desire for another man, for another woman, when you have gone through the process of purification over your body through the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, praying for your purpose partner and praying for your sex life to be blessed. And I want you guys to do this, right? Pray before with your purpose partner, your husband, your wife. Pray before you have sex with your partner and pray after. You will thank me later. You will thank me later. This is how it needs to be done according to the word. Not so many things, what women need to do and what men need to do for, for their sexual relationship to be out of this world. You pray about it, everything will flow. Everything will flow. There is prayer in it. There is blessing in it. Whatever that will come off that day will be blessed. And it will be great. And you will be without complaint. You will be without complaint. You will be without comparison. This is godly. This takes time the pleasure will not be the same as the pleasure of satan it will take time because you are in a different state of pleasure it's a god pleasure god is not in a rush satan wants you to rush from this one to that one to this one to that one but this one is not in a rush Do this, pray before you have sex and after sex, and you will thank me later. Please don't be shy to uh, write your comments on this session because, uh, truly speaking, this part of relationships in marriages and in committed relationships is such a crucial part of the relationship. It is very important. This should not be a deal breaker for people in relationships who are praying over their sexual partners, uh, who are praying over their committed sexual partners, husbands and wives. I have to be specific because now, you, like I said, you won't have time to pray and fast when you have multiple partners. So I'm gonna be specific on that one. You'll thank me later. Please, ladies, a gentleman, write your comments there. Write your comments. Pray before, pray after. That is my advice, according to the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to advise you on so many things. My advice is pray before you have sex and after you have sex. Bless the union. Bless your, your husband and your wife's body. Okay? Pray a prayer of enjoyment. 
and let God be in the midst of the act. It is a spiritual act after all. And let it be that you are receiving from each other and giving each other blessings. Cancel all curses. Like cleanse your body. Cleanse your body. Purify your body with the blood of Jesus before you encounter your man or your woman. Like I said, you'll thank me later. Done. Let us close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this session. We thank you for such an amazing word. Uh, this act of uh, the spiritual act that you have created between men and women is such a, a supernatural act that is here to edify you, that is here to glorify you, that is here to showcase your excellence through birth, through multiplication, what God can do in the body of a woman and what can God do from the body of man that creates the child in the womb of the woman. That is you, God, doing a miraculous work. That is you, God, showcasing the amazing, excellent work that you do and the supernatural work that goes into the creation of babies in the womb of the woman. So, Father God, today, we just want to bless those couples. We want to bless uh, the people who are in marriages, people who are in committed relationships. And we also just want to pray for those people who are struggling with multiple partners, that may you deliver them from that spirit of Satan, from that demon that is stealing away uh, their bodies, that is stealing away their blessings, that is literally stealing away their destiny and their purpose partners because they are governed by Satan. We release them, we lose them from that life, Father God. We also bless the committed relationships. May you edify their sexual um, acts. May you be with them during the sexual act. May you lose the spirit of temptation. May we lose the spirit of comparison and the spirit of complaint in their sex life also to the married father god i pray the same that may you multiply their families that may you increase in them father god what is so supernatural uh, about the, the the act of of sex it is a spiritual act and we are here to enjoy it and may you increase the pleasures father god and their spiritual juices may they be anointed in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Okay, guys. So, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I enjoyed this session. This was powerful. And I hope you guys take time. Take time to go through this. Take time. I know it's like one hour. Three minutes and counting. But take time and sit and go through this. You will thank me later. Thank me on the comments. Let's chat, guys. It is a very um, important part of people who are in committed relationships, people who are entering marriages, and people who are also in marriages because the devil is such a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil will attack marriages. The devil will attack the man and the woman sexually. Let us remember the power of sex. That it is the giving and the taking of an individual and everything about themselves and the spirit and the curses and the blessings they carry. It's, a, it's an exchange. So, so pray for your purpose partner and, and lose yourself from the curse and claim everything that you have lost as a result of life and challenges and trying to find your purpose partner you cannot find your purpose partner through sex with different people sit be still clean yourself wash yourself sit with god and he will show you how to treat your future wife and your future husband because in that time you will receive instructions. In that time, you will be taking care of your body. In that time, you are claiming back your body parts from so many people that have stolen them. Okay, guys.
have a lovely sunday i bless you all you will be blessed you will be blessed subscribe hit that button so that when i go on you get notifications so yeah let's continue the word guys let's continue the word we are faith based everything is faith everything is righteous and you know we are learning about the unrighteous so let's keep the faith going guys let's keep the apostleship uh, the apostleship going on in the kingdom of god it is a place of establishment and we have a place as apostleships in the kingdom of god so let's keep that going and let's keep the faith rolling <laughs> okay cheers guys <laughs>